This is enlightenment. Crap! <laughs> Maybe that'll be the beginning of the video. <laughs>welcome to the tentacle tech tech talk uh today i am going to do something epic i i i am going to explain to all of you not only what enlightenment is but also how to achieve it okay now please understand please understand that i am not enlightened i have not unlocked enlightenment but I learned something recently that I had never that I had never known before, and I wanted to share it with y'all. Um, there is a lot more value in this talk than just what enlightenment is and how to achieve it. But it's sort of the core of of, of what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so I'm very excited. By the end of this talk, y'all will all understand what enlightenment is and how to achieve it. So I'm very I'm 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 very excited. Okay, so we're going to start with a quote. Okay, and the quote is, Descartes, who is a philosopher, said, I think, therefore I am. And this quote gets memed on a lot, okay? But I, I think that most people don't actually understand what this is, okay? Uh, what, what, what Descartes was saying when he said, I think, therefore I am, is he, he was having trouble with proving his existence. He was having trouble, he was like, how do I know that anything that I look at is real? How do I know that anything that I'm experiencing is real? And what he came up with is that because something is thinking, because something is experiencing, something must exist. Even if, even if we're all in the matrix, even if, if all of this is just an illusion, some, some big monster guy must be thinking about something. And, 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 and causing something to show up. So something must exist. And that, that's, that's what Descartes um, concluded. So, recently, I have been trying to redefine my relationship with content creation stats, which for the remainder of this talk, I will refer to as numbers, okay? And you may be thinking like, how do these two things relate at all? I promise, we'll get to it. It, they, they, they'll tie back together and it'll be like a oh moment. Okay, I promise. So, the reason that I've been trying to redefine my relationship with content creation stats is because I notice a trend in content creators that here, here's what usually happens. You start out as a content creator and you're like, man, this is fun. And then you get to a point where you're like, wow, like this has a lot of promise. I feel like I could really make something out of this. And then all of a sudden your numbers start mattering like crazy to you and it wrecks your brain. It just absolutely wrecks you. You start being like, <laughs> my numbers aren't good enough and I don't know what to do. So then the next step is that you is that you start ignoring your numbers. You start not looking at your numbers at all and you just try to put the best show that you possibly can forward, okay? And that's great. And like a perfectly like acceptable way to do that. Lots of huge, huge content creators do that. It is a very successful strategy. It works. But for me, I am trying to go a step further and this will come up later in the talk. And that step further is that I am trying to redefine my relationship with numbers so that I am still using them, but I am, um, I am, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not negatively affected by them. Okay. So recently I was looking at my stats and you can see here, I, I have some graphs both from YouTube and from Twitch. And you can see that by every measurable statistic, all of my content creation is trending down. Okay. So in views, in watch time, in subscribers, and then here it is on Twitch, everything is trending down. You can't count followers because I got follow botted, okay? So everything is trending down, except like I've been streaming more hours, so that's even worse. I've been streaming more hours and <laughs> and all of my stats have been going down. So despite, despite my best attempts, I was feeling pretty down in the dumps about this. Even though I was trying to redefine my relationship with numbers, I was failing in this instance, okay? 
And then I watched a video by Dr. K, who I referenced earlier in, in, in stream today, okay? And um, I, want, I want to link this video for y'all because I, I would highly recommend everybody check it out because honestly, he probably has a much better understanding of a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about today than I do, but I wanted to share it with y'all so that so that I could I could at least like put this idea in y'all's heads and then if if uh, if y'all want to go and learn more, I highly recommend checking out this video. I'll put like if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put like the link down in the description. Um, and uh, and it, it's also on this article that I'm referencing here, which you can see by typing in exclamation point existence. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the link down below in the description, okay? Um, so, in this video, <clears throat> Dr. K talks about a lot of different things, but there are sort of two main categories of things that I wanna break down that he talks about, okay? The first is individual. Okay, and I'm gonna break individual down into three categories. Okay, so there is experience, and experience is our interpretation of what our mind processes. Okay, so our our our, our mind processes stuff, and then we and then we come to conclusions about it. Okay, then there's the mind, uh, which is that which manages our physical senses. Okay, and then the last one is the body, the tool we use to take in and exist within the external world. So our body is sort of the is sort of the like the sponge, right? Our body takes everything in and then our mind like processes it, right? Our mind like turns it into code that like the computer can understand, so to speak, right? And then there's this third thing called experience that interprets all of that code, that comes to conclusions about all of that code. Because basically what what um what like yogis have concluded is that and and so have like astrophysicists right like uh like schrodinger's cat is a good example that that when when before you open the box the cat both does and does not exist at the same time it is only by opening the box and having the experience that it is thrust into existence right and so the yogis concluded that the observed and the observing cannot be the same. So there must be something other than mind that is observing the mind, okay? And so that's sort of how this how this delineation breaks down. M body, mind, and experience, okay? Then there's a second category. I know this is a lot. It it'll it it it'll, it'll all tie together, I promise. Then there's a there, there's there's universal, okay? So the the universal breaks down like this. There is consciousness, which is the basic unit of existence. I'll justify that in a second. There is energy, the coalescence of consciousness. So consciousness coming together creates energy. And then there's matter, and matter is the coalescence of energy. So when energy comes together, it creates matter, okay? So now let's justify why um, why consciousness is the basic unit of existence. And to do that, we come back to Descartes. So the way that the, the, the way that we uh, justify this is that there is no way to prove existence other than consciousness. There is no way to prove existence other than the fact that that of, of what Descartes said that because something must because something is observing, because something has consciousness, because something is experiencing, Something must exist. That is the only way to prove existence, and therefore, it makes sense that it would be the basic unit of existence, right? So, there are a lot of instances in our lives where we get sort of caught up in our mind, okay? And there is a phenomenon. We get like caught up in the emotion and 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 all of the all of the interpretation that's happening in our in our, in our mind. All of the all of the like. Um, processing of data that's happening in our mind, we get caught up and, and juggled in it, ju like jumbled in it. And there is a phenomenon that happens that is that of like snapping out of it. And a really good example of this is when you are dreaming and you realize that you are in a dream and you wake up. It is the perfect example of snapping out of it. Okay, and basically what you're doing when you snap out of it in that way is that you are realizing that what you are experiencing is not real and you are taking a step back from it. You are, you are, you are disconnecting yourself from it. And it is this stepping away, this, this taking a step back 
that is enlightenment, okay? And before I watched this Dr. K video, I had never, ever, ever, ever heard such a clear explanation of what enlightenment was. And this isn't just in dreams, this happens in our everyday lives, where we'll be having some issue, and it'll just be heckin' just like, destroying us, right? We're just like, oh, I don't know what to do, I can't handle it! And then we'll just like, take a step back, and we'll be like, okay, I get it. Like, I, like, it, it, it's fine. Like, I, I, I got this. I can handle this. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't actually, this isn't actually affecting me the way that, the, the way that I think it is. I can change my experience of this. And so that's the basic idea is that we don't have control over what we experience, or sorry, we don't have control over what happens. Uh, but we do have control over what we experience. In fact, it's the only thing that we have control over. So, there are different, um, there are different levels of, uh, I'm just going to start with one example. There are different levels of, like, self-care. So you might, so with, like, self-care, you might start by talking about, like, the basic necessities, like being able to eat, like good hygiene, um, uh, you know, all the all the basic things that are like necessary in order to in order to like live longer, right? And then as you progressively get higher up in level, the things get more and more complicated, right? And and sort of more and more esoteric and more and more difficult to achieve, and um, and. This can be applied, these levels, these levels of consciousness can be applied to, so like, like, sorry, a, a, a really good example of this is like leveling up in a video game, okay? So when you, when you start out in a video game, they start teaching you just like the basic mechanics, okay? They just teach you, um, how, how the game works, how you, how you move around the game, etc. And then as you get higher and higher up in level, it gets harder and harder to beat each level. You have to apply more and more advanced tactics in order to, in order to beat the next level. And this can apply to stream stats as well. So here's the idea. I talked about it earlier. The first level is, this is, you know, this is really fun, I'm enjoying this. The second level is, I'm not gonna pay attention to my numbers at all. And then the third level is changing your relationship with the numbers. Realizing that the numbers are a tool for you that can that can give you data and 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 help you help you grow, but that your your uh, reaction to those numbers, like like how how those numbers actually behave, is completely out of your control. The only thing that you can control is your experience of them. Um, and so this isn't something new. This isn't this isn't some like revolutionary concept that your like your experience of something is is the thing that you can control. But what 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 is new here, at least for me, is this idea that by by accomplishing doing that, by changing my relationship with my numbers, I am actually raising to a new level of consciousness. I'm actually getting one step closer to enlightenment. And that heckin' lights my spark. I think that's so cool. I want to do that so bad. That sounds so rad, you know what I mean? So the way that Dr. K sort of describes this is you can't control if you get an A, but you can study hard and get all of the information and then go in with confidence with the work that you've put in. Now, that being said, not everyone is a content creator. Not everyone is going to be like worried about their numbers, all that sort of, all, all, all that sort of stuff. And so, um, so I wanted to make sure that I provided value for anyone here, whether they're a content creator or not. And this can be applied to any area of your life. And I hope that I have already illustrated that, but just in case, I, I just want I just want to drive it home for you all of all, all of y'all that the more that you are able to step back and and observe, because by observing, you have to be separate from what you are. But by being the observer, you have to be separate from what you're observing. It, it's just it's just like a law of nature, right? You have to be separate from what you're observing. So the more that you can do that, the more that you can observe what's going on, take a step back and look at what you're observing, the more understanding, the more clarity and the more peace you're going to have in your life. <laughs>
okay? Not to mention, you get to heck and level up, which is so cool. Every time you do this, you are leveling up your consciousness, which I just think is so cool. I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all get super excited about that, but that just feels so good. I'm leveling up. I'm, I'm a video game character and I'm level 20. Like that's so cool, you know? And what's really cool that I, I just recently learned yesterday, binging Dr. K videos, is that every time you fail, Ever, so like um, a really good example of this is meditation. Okay, so when you meditation, when you do meditation, the very basic premise of meditation, okay, is that you have a point of focus. Very oftentimes, your breath, and then every time that your mind wanders, every time you get caught up in your thoughts, you just bring it back to your breath. You don't you don't get frustrated with yourself. You don't beat yourself up. You don't you you don't like try to like push the thoughts away. You just gently bring yourself back to your breath, okay? And every time you do that, it's like you're doing a push-up, okay? And so technically, the more you do that, the more push-ups you're doing, which means the more fit your brain is getting. Okay, because that's really what meditation is all about. It's about it's about strengthening the mind and gaining more control over the mind. Okay, <clears throat> and what's really cool is that the more that you level up, the higher in level you get, the more good and bad move toward one another on the spectrum. The less they start looking like good and bad, and the more they start looking like things that are, right? It's just, it's just, it's just what, it's just what I'm experiencing. It's just what is. And that's, that's it. That's it. And so, and, and, and so you find you, again, you find that understanding, clarity, and peace in your life. <clears throat> and the best, the absolute best part about this is that a lot of times people are like, okay, I understand this concept esoterically, but like, how do I actually do this? And the best part is you don't have to actually do anything. And the reason for this is because the observation is enough. Just simply by taking the time to take that step back and observe, you are bringing about change. And every time you do that, you're going to be bringing about more change. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my tech talk for the day. So, if you are watching this on YouTube, please Subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you're on Twitch, if, uh, if you're and you're watching this talk live and you would like to, you, you'd like to clap it up. It, it always makes me feel really good. I always really appreciate it. Um, uh, thank you all so much. I really, I really hope that 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 this that this provided you all some value. Um, I was I the the, the these concepts are. Um, are incredibly difficult for me. Crap! I forgot a, a part of my tech talk. Okay, so <clears throat> right now, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go right back into it real quick. Right now, one of the areas in which I am working on doing this is with Birdie because I have been using Birdie as a um, as a crutch in my life for a long time, where where I sort of I sort of um, uh, use Birdie as my center, right? I've made Birdie my center and I sort of use her as such. And I think j just like with all of the level stuff that we were talking about, that has served me extremely well. And the next level is to remove Birdie from my center and, and to find how to still love and adore her absolutely, like wholeheartedly, and at the same time, not use her as my center. And I'm going to tell y'all that I have no forking clue how to do that. I am at a complete loss for how to do that. I am confounded at how to even exist within my relationship right now. But people who are smarter than me, that I that I trust implicitly and that and that and and that like love me dearly and 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 are are looking out for my well-being or like it's time you know like 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 th this this phase of life is happening and it's it's time to get on board like we, we we need to do this and so i'm just sort of like i'm just sort of along for the ride i have this theory with shakespeare that more people would understand shakespeare if they didn't try so hard to understand it if they just sort of let it wash over them and so um 
that's sort of what I'm trying to do with this right now. That as, as I'm trying to figure out what the heck this means to not have Birdie as my center, I'm just like, okay, like I'm I'm along for the ride. Like waves wash over me, I'm ready. I'm 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 here for it. Uh, and like Birdie and I have have set up like a like a lovely little tradition where each day we we like sit down on the floor here and we uh, I have like a little a little shrine table and we light a candle and we just talk. We just talk for like like a half hour or so. Um, about like, you know, our day, what's going on, what we're thinking about, what we're working on. Um, and like, like we, we, like we don't have our devices or anything like it's just us. Um, and it's been, it's been incredibly helpful for both of us in terms of, in terms of that journey. So yeah, that's the stuff I'm working on. And that's my tech talk. Yeah. Please leave that in the video. You want me to leave the crap in the video? No! No! All right.